escorted out of the arena. The only folks that remain in the arena right now are official judges. And you can see both of the robots are set up and ready to go. The Alabama robot on the left, you can see those, uh, those bright LEDs on the back of the robot. Those LEDs change color based on what mode the robot's in. So the students um, can, and the spectators can see what mode the robot's in. And we're off. Our 10 minute competition run has started. This Alabama robot showing green, which means it's fully autonomous. And obviously the students on the video are not touching the controls. You can see them casually. So the robot knows it's in the digging area and it's gonna start lowering its, uh, its bucket ladder digging system and driving forward as it digs. On the right hand side, Alaska Fairbanks on the B side is traversing over the obstacle uh, field, you can see they just straddled a, a pretty good sized rock. So this robot on, for Alaska is capable, it has a very, um, a very uh, high ground clearance and so it can straddle these rocks, which is a, a really great feature. Now I noticed, Kurt, that the Alabama robot, it really got up and went really fast. It but wasted no time. It wasted no time. Uh, the Alaska team, though, kind of going at a very steady pace. I think there's something to be said about going slow and steady. Sometimes slow and steady wins the race. But if you have a fast robot that doesn't make any mistakes, um, that could really give you an edge. So you can see the slot that was left behind by that Alabama robot. So when it comes back, it has to probably not, not fall into that same area. You can see Alaska on the right digging um, very furiously. Um, slow and steady, but it can it can get a lot of regular Alabama digging, and this is fully autonomous because the green in, the green LEDs indicate. So that's one trip in a minute 45. So do the math: how many trips can they do in uh, in 10 minutes? Now we're seeing we're seeing live data on uh, from the scales, so we can see how much regular stimulant was just deposited into the hopper and it is very close to 20 kilograms just from that one run. Now this is going to be interesting because the wheels on the, the left side of the screen are going to be going into the trench that it just dug. See if this robot can handle that without any problems. Meanwhile Alaska coming back to dump. Let's see how much Alaska dumps on the scale. The uh, Alabama scale has has creeped all the way up to 24 kilograms just from that one run, which is really a lot of regular. Multiply that by how many runs this robot can do. It's very fast, very agile, and it doesn't have any trouble powering through this regular. This regular simulant, it's very, it can be very hard to dig in unless your robot is, uh, is designed in such a way that it can handle the, the resistive forces that this, this regular simulant provides. Kurt, you were mentioning that the University of Alabama's robot is doing this all fully autonomously? Yes. It's really incredible. You can see the students in the control room right there on the screen. They're just watching and deciding if they need to intervene or not. It went right, right through a crater. So the obstacle field in the middle includes rocks and craters. And you just saw the Alabama robot go into a, into a crater, and, uh, but it, it powered right through it. It did not get stuck. There it's dumping, and it's dumping a lot. That is it. That was a lot of regular stimulant right there. And on the Alaska side, their first to be positive regular into the into the hopper was over 14 kilograms. So that is a really good run. Wowzers, Alabama, 147 kilograms on two runs. So obviously their second run, they got a lot more regular simulant than they did in their first run. Nope, nope, nope. Somebody had their foot on the scale. See, you gotta wait for these scales to settle down before we, before we put that up there. This is a really so, fierce competition. Both of these teams are doing excellently. Now, not only is Alabama getting a lot of regular in each one of their runs, but being fully autonomous is going to give them a lot of extra bonus points for this competition for the, towards the grand prize. Okay, Alaska is going to come back, I think. 
they're going to dump their second load. So right now the scale is showing about 58 kilograms on the Alabama side and about 14 on the Alaska side. Any numbers I spout out are going to be unofficial. Even the numbers that we put on the screen here are unofficial. Only the judges know the official score at the end of the round. And we are not, uh, we are not posting official scores here on the live feed. Those will happen um, later and be posted later officially online. Here comes Alabama for their third deposit into the hopper completely autonomously. Oh, that's a lot. That is a lot. Not only do they dig quickly, but they actually dump very quickly too, which gives them, and, and they traverse that obstacle field very quickly. Everything about this robot is fast and agile. Those respirator masks are coming in handy right now. Anytime you move this regular stimulant, this, this uh, finely ground uh, powdered rock, oh, there's a rock, speaking of rocks, it rocked that rock. Every time it rocked. Every time this regular simulant is moved, it's a very fine powder, so it goes airborne. And so that's why we have to use all this personal protective equipment um, for the judges that are um, full-time in the arenas. You can see the uh, uh, Alabama robot, it shifts itself over so uh, it doesn't try and dig in the same spot every time. We are six minutes in to this 10 minute run, and Alabama scale is currently showing almost 85 kilograms. On the Alaska side, they're showing more than 25 kilograms. Very nice, very nice work from both of these teams. So you can see Alaska, both of these teams have plunging bucket ladder systems, so they can adjust the height that they're digging. And if they try to dig too deep, they can adjust it back up. This, if you, try and, if you try and overdo it, you're going to get bound up because this regular simulant really works against you when you try and dig into it. Now, Kurt, can you tell me the methodology of why the University of Alabama robot digs in a different location every time? Well, one reason might be to keep the wheels from, from falling into the trench that it just dug. Um, you can see the depth, the depths of these these, each of these digs, they're leaving a pretty significant trench, which could cause problems for the robot. Now, I wonder which, I wonder where the robot is going to dig now, because you can see the trenches that are there. Um, it's only, if it, if it really wants to avoid those trenches, there's only a little bit of space left in the arena. So we'll see where it decides to dig this time. It's going over there. So it's going to, of course, it's just, a, it's just a traversing the obstacle field right now. Okay, it looks like it's going. Um, to that is huge. Twenty five, almost twenty six on the Alaska Fairbanks side. Alaska's coming back. To deposit another load. We're under two minutes in this run. This is the first of two official competition runs for both of these teams. You can see the wheels on the Alabama robot are coming a, a little close to the trench there. If it falls into the trench, we'll have to see if that's a problem for this robot or if it can power through it. I think that's probably one of the benefits of the Alaska team's robot. Having such a wide base probably gives it more stability. That's true. Um, it has, um, with the wide stance, it is very stable. Um, and uh, there is a trade-off for, for providing a low center of gravity to keep these robots from tipping over. That Alabama robot's wheel did fall into the trench, but it didn't have, it did not seem to affect its digging at all. So it's a very strong robot. Now, these teams do have, they do have a lot of things to trade off. If they build a robot that is that is so strong and so heavy, they could actually um, a heavy robot could actually be um, a detriment to the points that are awarded to them because the weight of the robot is actually a, a part of the point system that is used to calculate the final score for the grand prize. All right, 30 seconds left. What is this robot going to do on the Alabama side? 
it's basically uh, going to have to find another another place to dig. 161 kilograms on the scale for Alabama. That is a huge run wow. for Alabama. We only have 15 seconds left in this run. I guess the robot decided to switch sides on the arena. We're down to 10 seconds. Okay, it decided to dig right there. It's it looks like this, anyway. It looks like this run is going to be over. When they hit zero, the students are going to be told to stop the robots. And that's it for this run. University of Alabama with 162 plus kilograms, 163 plus. Nice. University of Alaska Fairbanks showing more than 40 kilograms on the scale. Really great run for both of these teams from Alabama and Alaska. Great job, both teams. So before the teams come out, we can talk more about what's happening. The, uh, the teams are putting their computers away in the control center. And uh, hopefully you'll, you'll get a chance, Sarah, to talk to some of these teams and uh, get a feel for how they're feeling after, after these runs. I imagine both of them are feeling pretty good. That was an awesome competition for both. I don't see a lot of emotion right now in the control room, but you know they're really happy about what just happened. They're uh, steely-eyed missile men. They are steely-eyed missile men, and that's true. So they're probably waiting for, uh, okay, they commanded their robot to, they're just doing the, the post-processing, emptying the, the regular simulant from their robot manually. And their, their teammates are in the arena now. And uh, they're probably going to come in and power off the robot when it's time, when they're given the signal. And then uh, the students are going to quickly be told by the judges to remove their robots from the arena so that we can bring in the next two teams. And the next two teams are going to be the University of Utah. And a local favorite, the University of Central Florida. That is coming up next at the, and don't go anywhere because Sarah is about to interview some of the students that just ran. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for sharing pictures on social media and using the hashtag RMC2016. Thank you also for posting the link to, to our live stream so that everyone around the country can hear about it and we can start a buzz about this competition. This is our eighth year and we hope to continue it several more years, eight more years hopefully, until we're actually landing, excavating robots on Mars. And hopefully technology that we see in this competition today all week long, will be able to be used by NASA on future Mars excavation robots, which will need to eventually um, process materials that are found on Mars and be able to live off the land while we're there, sending, sending human colonists to live on Mars for long-term, long-duration missions. That's what, this, that's what this competition is about. In between the runs, you can see the judges feverishly working on the arenas. They've got to reset the arenas and get them back to the pristine starting condition that they were in so that every team has a, uh, um, a, a fair starting chance with a, a clean and smooth starting area, a clean and smooth excavation area, and an obstacle area that has large rocks and large craters that the robots need to uh, traverse across. 